Even gold won't turn your tide We flow together like an ocean Every low and every high And I would have you anyway, dear Any way your heart could bear Even if you had to leave me I'd always be waiting here I don't mind the slow down anymore I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor I don't mind selling out or playing cover song Just as long as friends and family sing along And I don't need more money or a faster car no. Don't need a magazine to call me a superstar no. 
gonna take this little house and make a home And then I'll never have to face my nights alone Cause in my heart I hear Spain And on my face I feel you breathe Next to me To by land, by air, by sea And that is how it's supposed to be Now, and that much I can say Now I'm pulling loaves of bread down from the shelf And how rare it is that I stay up past twelve in the backyard we are going to start a garden If that don't sound mighty good, I beg your pardon Cause in my heart I hear you speak And on my face I feel you breathe Next to me, to by land, by air, by sea And that is how it's supposed to be now, and that much I can say Now If they don't love us, we don't need them Let's find our own brand of freedom If they don't love us, we don't need them Let's find our own brand of freedom I don't mind the slow down anymore I don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor Anymore, anymore everybody i've missed you i've missed every one of you so much this has been something i have needed in my soul i keep telling you all that you all have like helped me through all of this this uh this pandemic and then you know we've had we've had a rough we've had a rough 2020 
but this community has helped me get through it. I have loved hanging out with you all. Uh, I missed the nightly tastings, but it did not feel appropriate in the last couple weeks um, to do them. So I hope to get back on track on a regular tasting basis. And of course, if you are a member of the YouTube community, then you know, you've been getting a little uh, tasting here and there. So, um, yeah, I missed you all. I missed you all. And if you're new, if you're just now joining for the first time, click subscribe. We have a lot of fun here. I've got a membership group. They'll tell you all about it, but you get your own emojis. You get some exclusive content. And if you're a singling member, you get to know my whiskeys of the year before anybody else. So that's where it's at it's in that community. But I appreciate you coming in here right now tonight and tasting with me. We have a lineup of lineups. Now I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be listening or watching the chat, and uh, I will try to answer some questions here and there. But you need to know that we're actually going to have an after party with my wife. Now you might have rec you might remember my wife from um, the curation desk. Uh, previously where, you know, we were kind of going back and forth on cocktails and I said I didn't like her cocktails. Well, Jack Daniels sent me some canned cocktails and I figured, hey, what the heck? I'll, I'll taste some Jack Daniels canned cocktails. I'll see what that's all about. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited to see, see what that's about. Cause believe it or not, I'm actually a fan of, uh, canned and bottled cocktails for some reason. It makes no sense, given my hate for pretty much uh, everything else uh, flavored. But listen, guys, you all have got to go watch that episode where I'm tasting Screwball, the peanut butter flavored uh, whiskey. It was awful. I uh, honestly, I thought I was going to throw up. I did not throw up, but I thought I was going to throw up. And that was not acting. That was not me doing like a fake gag. That was legitimate, grossed out of my mind, smelling, you know, fermented chocolate milk and tasting something that legitimately tasted like poop. And it was just awful. So go check that out. And also, man, I had probably one of the greatest interviews of my career with uh, the Hall & Oates front man, uh, Daryl Hall. What a great interview he was, and I do wish that I could have had it in person or on camera, but he didn't have the technology uh, where he was uh, in his vacation home, or I believe that's where it was, and I wasn't able to, so I said, you know what, we'll do this by phone, and so I was able to record it, and uh, just a great guy. Make sure you're checking out his his TV show uh, live from uh, Daryl's house. It was such a... Uh, it was such a good time for me. I really thoroughly enjoyed that. And let's see what else do I have. Uh, and my, oh, I did. If you are a member, uh, you did see me taste the wild turkey bottled and bond, the seventeen-year-old. Uh, that will be coming out here in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm edit in the process of having that edited right now. And I'm trying to give, uh, I'm trying to give my lives and all, everything that I'm doing. I'm trying to give it a different look. So tell me what you all, uh, tell me what you all think of tonight's setup over here. I have the actual, I have the actual whiskeys that I will be uh, tasting, and I am really, really, really stoked to taste these because what we have here is we have a kind of a, we have a combo of very various things. Like, and what I did, how I selected these. Now, as you know, people send me bottles at no cost to me. And it, it's what these are. These were sent to me. I get sent bottles all the time. And sometimes I just put them away and they sit in the office or I put them over there and I forget about them. Well, these are recent uh i've received these recently so i'm cracking into them tonight and um and very 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 excited you know to to jump right into this it is going to be uh fantastic 
fan fantastic so let's see if we have any questions out there in the world say it looks like some folks saying we have uh, a little bit of pixelation in the in the clarity so um, I if you all are seeing that I hope um, that is not the case but it's looking good on my end and but you know well let's see if we let me take a look in YouTube see if there might be an issue there um, we've got some crystal clear notes yeah yeah it looks good on my end all right so I hope I hope that clears up for you whoever uh, said there's a little pixelation there uh, but it looks really 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 solid um, on my end for sure okay so we're gonna go ahead and get right into um, oh boy Corey says this is why your wife says uh, more need to find their way home not sure on that one uh, we, so we've got a couple comments that it is fuzzy on YouTube it looked good to me and um, now Dean uh, Dean over here is saying uh, get rid of the porn uh, I think he's uh, commenting to some folks <laughs> uh, Joe says the audio is fine the YouTube video is good and he's streaming on uh, a 4k TV so uh, that's funny that's funny Philadelphia is looking good so right now we are streaming on D-Link uh, Twitch Periscope Twitter and YouTube so what we're going to be doing here in the future, uh, I'm going to be doing more um, YouTube only stuff. So if you're watching this on one of the other platforms, go to YouTube and subscribe. The, I will always be, I will continually um, uh, streaming to those devices, but what I'll be doing is they're gonna be archived on, they're gonna be archived on, um, YouTube. So, Journey, Journeyman Distillery is a craft distillery in Michigan. Okay, so these guys have been on my radar for a very long time, uh, and I do believe they're actually here in uh, the chat as well. So, uh, Bill, if you want to comment and make yourself known in the in the youtube community uh, i'm sure people would love to ask you some questions but so these are this is a um what we're tasting here is going to be um this is a this is a rye whiskey so this one the one thing that i found fascinating about this was that it's rye and wheat so it's it's got a good chunk of rye in there and the rest of the grain is uh is wheat which is which is really really unique you don't see people uh mixing wheat and rye like that and there he is right there uh bill welter ladies and gentlemen is the distiller so we're got, we're tasting him first and and last so take uh if you all have any uh questions or comments for him Ooh, i like that smell So, um, so journeyman is a, is like one of these, like, you know, rising star distilleries that everyone's been, a lot of people have been really hot on them. Uh, they do a lot of, they're all organic and they are kosher. So they're someone who's very, they're very sensitive to, uh, you know, the, you know, to people who want to want something that is all organic and um and it's kosher they distilled this so they this is for, these are grains that they selected and they distilled them and they have uh they seem to have a a, a real enjoyment for distilling wheat without corn which is you know not a lot of people have that so i'm excited to this rye This rye is, mm. so Bill, Bill's commented there, right there, and um, on 
uh, the distillery and I'm just going to get to I'm going to get to the tasting and not focus so much on the comments now. Okay, this is like um, I'm going into a, a grain mill um, where there's all these like grains that are being like milled and being brought in by the, you know, the farmers. So there's like this uh, really, really unique smell of grains getting milled. And it's, uh, it's a lovely smell. And then after that, I'm getting some like cedar. And some some botanicals. So it hits the palate um, directly in the back. It goes directly in the back, and then it and it kind of walks itself forward a little bit. There's a there's a nice note of black licorice. Um, there's some spice there. I can't really determine what kind of spice it is at the moment, but it's definitely it's definitely penetrating the back of my palate, and it's almost as if it's like it barely hits the tip of my tongue. Uh, so this is a very spice centric, uh, a lot of different types of spices, but I can't really put my finger on what kind they are, but it definitely leans toward a hot sauce or a pepper. Uh, usually I'm able to like, you know, trace it down to like a type of a pepper. But right now it just, I can just say it's, it's real spicy. And the way that it hits my palate, it starts in the back and then moves up a little bit, but it never hits the tip of my tongue. So that is, um, that's interesting. I will say that there are no there are no flaws in this. Uh, I don't detect anything that's like, you know, um, I don't detect any heads or tails. Um, I know they do they do single distillation, so single distillation is not something that you see a lot of in um, in American whiskey. You know, you, usually everything's double double distilled. Uh, you do see su single distillation in rum. Um, you see it in a little bit in like, uh, uh, Ireland. Yeah, this is, um, this is a, this is a really, this is a really, uh, fascinating study of the grain. And again, I'm tasting the, uh, journeyman. Uh, distillery last feather rye it is an organic rye whiskey made in Michigan Three Oaks Michigan distilled barreled and bottled there and it is um, these are all um, four years old minimum of four years old and it is really I really like this. I really like this because it's it's almost it's almost like it develops you develop you, you taste the grain uh but then you taste the spices uh and then I get like a really nice um corn licorice or not a corn licorice uh but a black licorice note and um that is really, really interesting. Uh, Uppercut Whiskey asked, did you feel the spice of the rye gave a little much fire in the front? 
you know, I actually I didn't get much on the on the front. It was all toward the back. And I mean, yeah, I mean, that was it is a hot fire. So it's but it's not like a burning fire. It's um, it's it's like it's genuinely just like a, uh, you know, like a hot sauce, you know. Yeah, I, I dig this. I dig this uh, quite a bit. Also, something else here, they have uh, their their label uh, reminds me of a, of a baseball used in the Japanese professional leagues, kind of rough, you know, and like I can imagine like this being turned into a baseball, you could throw a mean curveball with it. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to save this guy here for last. This is a uh, filibuster. Uh, this is the uh an mgp product from uh, a distillery out of uh virginia uh source that they've been been going doing pretty well yeah don't don't this is not a hot whiskey to go back to there's some comments here about like it is it being hot or whatever that was not my 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 saying that it was like a hot sauce was in reference to the spice. It is not by any means like uh, hot. So here we are. We're going to move on to Nelson's uh, Greenbrier. Um, this is a, a Tennessee whiskey. So this goes through the uh, Lincoln County process where they use charcoal filtration uh, before it goes into the barrel. So they'll distill it and they'll drip it down through the um through the, the the maple charcoal now uh, charles nelson uh, comes from a historic family they his his uh great great grandfather was um his name was charles nelson as well but he was like bigger than jack daniels was bigger than george dickel he was like a very iconic important distiller and he had operations all over the place uh, prohibition hits, he gets in a little bit of legal trouble, and we kind of lose track of him. But his uh, grandsons uh, brought it back, and this is their, um, this is their, this is like one of their, their first uh, baby to come out. Like they've had a couple others, but they are really good. They're like really known for sourcing their whiskey. And, um, and, you know, doing finishing and what have you. So I will be ranking these, uh, as I often do, I will put these in order of how I like them. And, um, uh, that last one, the, the journeyman distillery, the rye, that is really, uh, growing on me and, I kind of want to. I kind of want to keep drinking it, so that's kind of a good sign, I guess, for that one. All right, so here we are on the Nelson's Greenbrier. Um, you know, I I smell. I smell like um. Leftover coals, like ash it smells like um like you weber grill you just uh cooked the shit out of some brisket or something and then those coals um is uh left over from um you know overnight and you know to recap this is this is nelson greenbriars this is their this is theirs. They distilled it, so this is one of those that is not sourced. And then kind of like after that ashy smell, uh, I'm getting like uh, apples. A pretty... A pretty general uh, cornbread note.
kind of comes in, goes out. It it, it tastes like um, uh, cornbread, you know, right before like a like a a barely cooked all the way cornbread where it's still kind of gritty. This is um, this still has some. I still think this has some aging to do. Um, this is probably not not quite where they want it, but it is a nice first step, you know, to have a release out. That's um, their Tennessee whiskey. You know, I mean, this is for the for the age that it's in. You're going to be asking this to compete against genuinely Jack Daniels and Jim Beam, um, maybe something like J.W. Dant. I mean, it's 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 a young bourbon, and you can definitely you can definitely taste that. And I think that just in maybe another year or two in that barrel, and um, you know, it's going to be quite quite good. It's it's very drinkable right now. But I do not think that um, it is where the potential is there. The potential is there. What I see, what I taste in it is um, is youth, is youth. And Charles, Charles Nelson is, is one of my best friends in the distilling business. So I'm sure he's going to he's going to send me uh, um, a nice care package with a horse head in it or something. So. <laughs> I love you, Charles, and um, this whiskey is is good. And I'm looking forward to seeing it what it's going to be like in uh, in a little bit longer. So, okay, so I'm going to move on from that one. I, I'm, actually, I want to taste that rye again. Yeah, man. If if you if you work in if you ever worked in a farm setting, you know that smell of grains getting milled. A fresh smell of them getting milled. That's that's what this is, and it's so fascinating, because usually that that smell gets knocked down quite a bit. Okay, that was something. Yeah, I like going back to that one. Okay, so here we go. We're staying in Tennessee. This is uh, Pennington, uh, Davidson's Reserve. Uh, I, I love this bottle. There was, um, there was a rum brand that used this same bottle, Cartavio. Um, and I, this is, if, I, if, I'm getting to, if I'm getting pushed into picking out my favorite bottle, in a uh, that's out there, like people can just grab and put something in. It's probably this one. I don't know what it's called, but I love I love the way it feels in my hand, and uh, yeah, I love this bottle. So this is seventy percent corn, twenty five percent rye, five percent malted barley. It's four years old, ninety six proof. Oh, I forgot to tell you that the descriptions of all these bourbons or all these whiskeys are in the description of YouTube. So you should be able to find that in there. Okay. Okay, so this... Um, the nose is really... Hmm. Yeah. Woof. Um, so, so the nose here, the nose on this can kind of came off. Um, the nose kind of came off a little bit of plasticky, a little bit of drywally um, kind of construction material. 
and uh, I'm just I'm noticing this this particular nose more and more with with uh, whiskeys that use um, synthetic corks like that. I'm just noticing it more and more, and I, I don't I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It, the, the nose is not doing it for me. The palate is um, the palate just does not. The palate is better than the nose, but it's still not what I want to see. There's some cinnamon there. Uh, there's some black pepper. Um, there's some like, uh, some like prunes, um, but it's, it's generally, generally just a little, a little off. And actually tasting, tasting that makes me appreciate the um nelson's Greenbrier just uh quite a bit more because it is an expression of of the whiskey there are no flaws there i felt like there was um uh, i i felt like the 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 last one did not meet the kind of like standards i'm looking for in a whiskey so next, let's go to the other journeyman. Now, we got Bill out here somewhere. He's getting a little racy with that label there. I mean, corsets, whips, and whiskey. Now, this is just, this is going to be a little bit of a sidebar here. I generally don't like these labels. Um, I, I think labels like this you know, could really be perceived as sexist. And I'm just, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I like to see the, I like to see, you know, whiskey be a little bit more on the up and up, especially after all the research I did with whiskey women and knowing that there is a actual historic link between prostitutes and, and whiskey, you know? So I, I, I I'd always caution someone against doing something, um, like that, especially with the whip. Well, it may seem funny and come off as as interesting. You gotta be careful there. You gotta be careful. And Bill Bill's commenting that his uh his distillery is in an old uh corset and buggy whip factory. Well then, you know, he's got a little <laughs> he's got a story there, that's for sure. He's got a story there. Not every day you you uh you hear about a corset and uh buggy factory becoming a distillery but i'm actually surprised the uh the label got approved i've seen a lot of labels like this that didn't get approved okay so this is uh this again is distilled and bottled that uh journeyman uh, now this one is uh packing some heat this is wheat whiskey this is a cash drink wheat whiskey and uh as uh, my recollection you all can um you all can look at that in my in the description, but let me kind of give you my my um, my basic thoughts on wheat whiskey. Wheat whiskey is a category that has been looking for something to stand out. Uh, wheat whiskey does not typically typically does not do well. They tend to have a lot of bubblegum flavors. They tend to have um, a lot of, uh, what should I say? Uh, they, they, they lack, they lack a, a mouthfeel often. And the best wheat whiskey I have ever tasted was the Parker's Heritage um, from a few years ago. And it was phenomenal, 13-year-old wheat whiskey. But it was really high in corn. So you could make the argument that it was really similar on, on a bourbon. Now this is this is a lot of wheat, 
Uh, you do see some people try to do hundred, you know, do hundred percent wheats, and people like them. And oh, oh my! Well. That that knows right there. That knows. Holy crap. As I recall, this is um this is a hundred percent wheat. So I'd be curious, and I did not talk to them, but I'd be curious about how fermentation goes, if they have malt, if they if they malt the wheat, uh, or if they're using an enzyme during fermentation. But guys, this knows. I mean, if the if the palate is as good as this nose, which the nose is basically, you're walking into someone is baking a um, a cake. There's like caramel icing over here, ready to go. All those good baking aromas are in the air, and they're just kind of all together in like one kind of like. Note, this thing smells beautiful. Ah, I almost don't want to taste it because it smells so good. But we don't judge whiskey on uh, smell alone. Oh, shit. Wow. Some bitch, that's good. Damn. Damn. Oh my God. That is good. I mean, wow. Wow. That is that is beautiful. I've been waiting for a long time, a long time for someone to make a wheat whiskey like this. I I'm at a loss for words for what I'm feeling on my palate. But I'm still feeling it. It's tickling. It's tickling the my the neck of the back of my neck is like tickling. This is pure butter, just dripping down the jawline, jumping all up on the roof of the palate. There is not a single burn whatsoever, and it's a friggin' 132 proof. Man, this is absolutely. Gorgeous. Monica Wolf asks a very good question uh, about the rationale of the order of the tasting. Wouldn't you normally start with the lighter and then move toward the higher and sipping rye whiskey in between might mess the palate up. Um, you know, I think I'm pretty different. Um, I don't really, I kind of do it by, um, you know, you know, categorical, um, we have and and by age and, um, we have, you know, the next thing I'm tasting is, is a 15 year old, uh, MGP and, you know, that's a bourbon. And so I'm saving that bourbon for last, but, um, you know, I, I'm still, I'm still feeling this on the palate, but damn, this is so friggin' good. Mm. 
Okay. So I get I get molasses in here. Um, I get chocolate chip cookie dough. I get uh, butterscotch. I mean, really butter, butter, butter. Um, it's so it's just so good. And and by the way, this is one of the most original finishes of any whiskey I've had this year. This is uh, this is absolutely exceptional, exceptional. And this is all live, folks. I, I didn't taste these before. Um, I, this is this is all live, and you know, I never know how my reaction is going to go. I obviously, you know, wasn't as high on others. Um, but this was that that was an amazing amazing tasting mm. wow go ahead and uh, answer a couple questions here uh elijah miller asked is it uh william larue weller good well william larue weller is a bourbon this is a wheat whiskey so you gotta remember Weeded bourbons are not wheat whiskeys. Wheat whiskey is its own category. Wheat whiskey has to be at least 51% wheat. They can add corn. They can add other things, but it has to be predominantly wheat, whereas weeded bourbons are predominantly corn. So this would be in a very different category. With that said, I mean, that thing, what I just tasted, that could probably win just about any blind competition. Um you know, with the right tasters. I mean, it's, it's friggin' phenomenal. Uh, some comments here uh, on, uh, you know, from the actual distillery. Uh, Tom, who is affiliated with the distillery, says these products are no longer limited. They are available year round. Uh, Corey's basically asking the question is, you know, basically, is it better than Bernheim? Yes, this is better than Bernheim. However, the Parker's Heritage that I tasted, uh, the 13-year-old Parker's Heritage uh, from a few years ago, I mean, I don't want to say it's better than that one. I would have to taste them side by side. But that was an elite whiskey. That was a That was one of my top you know, for the last 25 years, that's like on the top 100 list. I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. Ooh, God, that was good. Okay, so now let's get to the filibuster 15-year-old. Um, uh, glass is dirty. So this is um, this product is um, actually so filibuster is a distillery. They've actually got a lot of barrels that they're aging. They have a, a really nice setup. They've got some blends that they're doing. They also um, are very. Um, That this may be, um, you know, they, they have a, a, a lot of like a big following in like Virginia in the Washington DC area. Um, and they procure some nice barrels from uh, MGP from time to time. And they got uh, their hands on some 15 year old MGP. And um, I am super curious to see how this is going to fare uh, tonight. This is 114 proof, and it was, um, it's interesting. He, he, he has it on the label that it was distilled by Seagram. So I wonder, so Seagram actually 
was not affiliated with the distillery um, after 2000 because they sold it to Pernod Ricard, who then sold it uh, to CL Financial, who then sold it to MGP. So I wonder if he has he got his hands on uh, some tank liquid from, you know, the 90s. I know there was some of that out there, and it was... Uh, Oh, man. Yeah. That's frigging gorgeous. It's a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of butterscotch. Um, some baked bread coming out of the oven. Whew. So what we have here is we have a little bit of earth. We have a little bit of spice. We have some sweetness. It's a, uh, it's a nice kind of back and forth of, um, of, of what it's offering on the palate, but there's a very kind of like herbal, uh, earthy note in there. Hmm. Scott Seymour asks, what is tank liquid? And if it's from the 90s, wouldn't it make it much older than 15-year-old age statement? So uh, a lot of um, if you when you would take whiskey out of a barrel and you put it in a, uh, a steel drum, like a stainless steel drum, something that wouldn't impact and it's airtight, you've got it stored in a proper place uh, where it won't get volatile you basically it it ceased its aging and so the aging is only its time in the barrel so after it's been tanked uh it does not have a it does not have an age statement and i know for a fact that that distillery tanked a bunch of stuff for specific use um for blends like later down the road because that was a blending that, that that liquid was used for blending and they they would they would tank it after a certain point Hey Jason, welcome to the party. Coming in now as I'm getting some Fig Newton and some banana. Um, yeah. I mean, I dig it. And there's going to be a bottle of this available on uh, the Bourbon Women um, auction site for their annual um, symposium. Uh, they donated a they donated a bottle uh, to that so you'll be able to buy it you know, soon, uh, through, through an auction, uh, it'll be available online. That's a great question. Human size, uh, giant asks, uh, what's the biggest flaw in your own palate? Uh, I think we witnessed it, you know, recently when I had to taste, well, I didn't have to taste it. My friend brought it and said, Hey, taste this screwball. I have a real um, a real negative reaction to sweetened things. Uh, so if something has uh, sugar added to it, I can't. A lot of people can really um, a lot of people can really get um, you know can discern after they taste a little bit of sweet. Like if you add sugar to something, that'll be all I taste. Um, 
Now, if if sweetness comes from the the barrel, then it's different. But I I do notice that like I I have an adverse reaction to uh, something that that has uh, su you know sweetness added to it. So that's why I really do not like the you know flavored whiskeys. Uh, Scott asks, uh, would the herbal elements be from the rye? That's not a component I associate with wheat usually. Um, well, we were tasting the, I think, uh, I think, I think, I don't, I don't know which one you're asking about because, uh, I don't know at what point in the stream you're coming in, but, um, I don't, let me know, Scott, what, what product you're talking about there that I was tasting. Uh, Fred uh, Kendrick asks, is your issue with sugar the same with rum? You know, rum is, rum, the, the, the people who add, you know, sugar in the, um, add sugar into rum, they, they're better at it. I'm not saying I agree with it, but they're better at it than those who are making flavored whiskey. Uh, people who are making flavored whiskey are just throwing it in there without really tasting it. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the screwball people tasted their stuff. I really don't. But um, it, um, I don't know. I just, I, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like sweetened up stuff. Um, and, you know, my book, Rum Curious, I obviously, I reviewed a lot of things that did have, did have some sweetness added. And I was high on things like Cartavio and a couple of plantation products, but I felt that there was balance there and the sugar did not overtake it, you know? So if someone is going, I think the products that where the sugar overtakes it, it just destroys me. It did. I mean, and I don't have any kind of recourse. You know, uh, Dean says it's a GMO thing. It's processed sugar. You know, you might be right on that. Okay, so Scott, when he um, um, comes back here uh, with another question. Uh, well, I kind of just answered that uh, on the impact of adding sugar and rum. But he did bring up his other question earlier was about the herbal component in the rye um, with uh, filibuster. So he noted that it was about filibuster he was talking about. And, you know, I would say that, the, you know, herbs tend to come from rye from me and and that's pretty, that's pretty common. And those herbs will lean toward things like dill and oregano. Um, I also find a lot more earth in, in those whiskeys. So yeah, yeah. I hope that helps you out there. I hope that answers your question. So let me get to kind of like how I'm, how I'm going to like place these tonight. Uh, obviously we have one whiskey that uh, I was so high on. I really, really, really like the 15 year old filibuster. It has a It has a bit of a beauty to it. It has some finesse. It has some complexity. It has some like some caramel chew notes. It has it has a lot of nice things there. And it's pretty obvious that this is coming down to for me for to pick tonight. It's going to come down to um, you know the journeyman wheat whiskey. And I about dropped that one. And the filibuster. So it's coming down to these two for me tonight. But I would, 
I would like to kind of narrow down who I feel like, um, you know, three and two. I'm going to put, uh, I already narrowed down that, you know, my least favorite of the night is um, the Davidson Reserve. Um, I felt that there was some flaws in it that I was not too uh, keen on tasting multiple times. And then I really had a, uh, um, I had a bit of what might, might have appeared to be like a critical note on Nelson's Greenbrier, but was in all actuality a, a discussion of age. And of course, something that is five, six, seven, eight years old is probably going to taste a little better than a four-year-old whiskey. And I got a lot of uh, a lot of promise in this, but I want a little something more. But it's it's not flawed. And then we have the other uh, the other whiskey here, which is the uh, Last Feather uh, from from Journeyman. So it's basically between these two for you know third place for tonight. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like coming from that wheat whiskey and and the filibuster, uh, it, it's almost like these are just completely foreign to me now. Like they don't even smell like I thought they did. And that's because they're coming off of like such high high level hitters, you know. All right, so I'm I'm going back to that place of the grains getting milled with the with the journeyman rye. That black licorice note still real promising. But I think I'm going to give the edge to the Nelson Greenbrier in this case. Um, it's a it's a nice it's a nice whiskey. It's it's clean. It's it's got a lot of um, it's got some some depth to it. Uh, but it's all grain. You know, it's grain, 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 grain. What it does have that the other does not is a little bit more of a viscosity, a little bit more of a mouthfeel. So I'm going to, I'm going to give the edge to Nelson's Greenbrier in that one. So now basically it comes down to these two for, for tonight's taste off. And I am going to get some fresh glasses so we can uh, pour from new. If you all just want to hang out real tight, I will be right back after I pick some songs.
All right, so here we are. We're back. That was uh, that was quick. So what it comes down to is we have um, a really nice um, filler buster, fifteen year old from MGP. And the journeyman wheat whiskey. This is uh, batch ten. Actually, I'll let you guys see the guitar a little bit. Scott asked the question, do I notice similar notes in the journeyman to the... Um, Journeyman Ride to the much older wheat version. Is there anything similar in style which tells you the same distillery? Absolutely not. Uh, there was no similarities there for me whatsoever on the mouthfeel or how it hit my palate or anything. Great, great question, though. So, Scott, for that great question, hit me up on... Um, send me a message, and I've got something for you. That That's... An amazing question. Great question. Okay, so here we go, guys. It's coming down to what do I like more for the night? It's Filibuster 15-year-old or the Journeyman Distillery Wheat Whiskey. I feel like this is a mood a mood situation. And I think one of these I'm always in the mood for. The other one I got to be in the mood for. I went down the wrong pipe. <clears throat> it happens. I neglect the fact that it's um, 130 proof because it doesn't feel like 130 proof on there. Oof. Now, this is really close. Um, <clears throat> it's really close, but I don't know. I don't know if I have a decision. I feel like I feel like this is one where might be a tie. Eric nails it. It's like two different types of food. One's Mexican food. The other's Chinese food. I love the shit out of both of them. <clears throat> but, yeah. I don't know. This is hard, guys. It 
Yeah, I can't call it. This is this is a tie for me, guys. I apologize. Um but um <clears throat> yeah, that's real. Yeah, Bruin Bruin says, don't you usually allow for three tastings? Yeah, that's when uh that's what I'm doing those uh when I'm scoring. You know, I look at this what I'm doing here with these things as um as as some fun um just having a good time doing a <sighs> kind of entertainment you know like i'm trying to it's really really difficult to you know open something up and taste it and then you know revisit it again on 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 youtube it's different like with writing you know like what i what i will do next time is i will throw this i will throw these in like a blind tasting and see um you know to see kind of like where it sits where where it falls out and you know i also will send it to an artist like like i did with uh daryl daryl hall and um <clears throat> it's they're both they're both fantastic. Jeff says, "What what would the journeyman compare to as far as a taste profile?" I'll be honest with you; I've never tasted a wheat whiskey that tastes like this. It's so buttery, you know. I mean, look at it. Look at that color. That is freaking. Mm. Look at that. Uh, Kent asked if uh, I ate some crackers and cheese, would it reset my taste buds to lean one way or the other? You know, probably would. Probably would. But I don't have any uh, crackers and cheese on me. But you're also looking at something, too, that is uh, distilled by... These guys distilled it themselves. This was sourced, although they do they do distill themselves. Um, now you know I'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and make the call after that last tasting. This is this is with a narrowly razor thin margin, and I think it may be different if we taste it if I tasted these again tomorrow. Um, or the next day in a, in blind competition, but this is how high I am on this uh, this whiskey. This um, 132 proof wheat whiskey is definitely well the top. It, it it's either number one or it's number two in terms of wheat whiskeys I have ever tasted. And the only thing that I can think of in the wheat whiskey category uh, that even comes close to it is um, is the Parker's Heritage. Arguably the Bainbridge from uh, a couple years ago. But this cash strength wheat whiskey is absolutely phenomenal. It's phenomenal i really i really find this to be delicious and uh if you're a whiskey fan if you're a whiskey fan i mean you owe it to yourself uh to taste this because it is um it's not every day you you, you find a wheat whiskey that you want to drink and 
for this to like kind of it compete with a 15 year old friggin Indiana bourbon to begin with is is one thing, but for it to really honestly and truly win in, in the taste off with me, albeit it was narrow, um, you know, that that's another thing. But what it comes down to was the flavor that it left on my palate after the finish. I'm still tasting it. So kudos to these guys for making an exceptional, exceptional whiskey. Um, no doubt my wife will now steal it and make whiskey sours. So speaking of my wife, we've got the, we've got the membership, uh, we got the membership live stream coming up next and that will be from my home and we'll be live streaming, you know, we're going to live stream from the house and we're going to drink some Jack Daniels cocktails canned. And I'll give some history behind those and why those are unique and important right now. Um, you guys, uh, if you're not a member, click the join button and uh, I'll see you all over there. Probably it's going to take me a few minutes to get set up and everything. So be patient with me. But I put the link out. Nah, I don't think I put the link out. Just be, be in the member area, ready to go. And... Um, I'm really, really excited to hang out with you all tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm really giving this YouTube thing a go. And, you know, everybody who subscribes, and if you're not subscribing, please click that right now. It's, it means a lot to me. I appreciate it. You know, I've, I will be honest with you. I've written books. I've been in films. I've done TV. But YouTube is is where you go if you want to get destroyed and if you want to and if you want to like uh if you want to challenge i love challenges i love challenges and what i do is i create content and i write and i talk and i provide history if you will and to me youtube is the place that has allowed me to be me you know, it really is like I, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have happened. It, it made it a little bit harder. But these nightly streams, these live streams, I've missed them. I missed them. I really, really have. I miss I miss hanging out with you all. So I'm glad we're going to be able to get to back to that on a more normal basis. The time may, The time might change, but I'm glad to get back to them. So thank you all so much for hanging out. Come to the uh, members only live stream and we're going to have a good after party. I tell you what, it's going to be a good time. But as I close out, I'll tell you, you know, it's really, really important. Stay six feet away from each other and don't go licking handrails. Don't lick uh, trash cans. And remember, vodka sucks unless... Unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Normally I point to my sign, but it's out of the frame. So cheers, everybody. I will see you all soon.